Hello, my friend and friend. Something I do quite often is create gradients with a single color stop in them. And why would I do that? Gradients are all about interpolating from one color to another. We want something that looks pretty. So why would I make a gradient with a single color? That's a really good question. So today we're gonna answer that uh, by diving into this demo here where I have, we're gonna look at a couple of different things uh, and use cases, but here's one of them where I have text that's hard to read because my background image is light and dark and this happens all the time. And so instead of using a pseudo element or something else to try and you know create an overlay, I can just do it with a second gradient or a second image and Im images happen to be gradients. So I can do a linear gradient here and it could be any gradient, conic, radial, whatever you want. Conic would actually save you a, a keystroke here. Uh, and I just have to comma separate them. So I do my linear gradient comma and then I have my URL and the linear gradient needs to be first. So this is on top of this one. That's the way they, they will layer. And I could just come here and actually write black and hit save and now I have a solid black color on top, which is completely useless but we could maybe use a black with a lower opacity. So we'll use an HSL of zero, zero percent, zero percent, and I'll put like a 0.5 for the alpha value. And then as we can see, if we go with a zero here, it's quite hard to read this text. And if I come in with a 0.5, now I can actually read all of my text and you can adjust this alpha however fits for the image and the situation you're in. And I'm using black. Maybe you'd want to come in with a different color, something that's a bit more on brand with the greens here and use a blend mode or something like that. Uh, it really depends on the situation that you're in, but that would open up that possibility as well. Now there is one small thing with this is a single color gradient like this is supported in all browsers, but Chrome was actually the last one to add it and support for it isn't perfect. It's relatively new. So if you do want to ensure that you have farther back support, you can just come here and put a zero zero, which looks really weird, but this will help with just having better browser support because what these are, are the two color stops that we're putting for this gradient. And the reason this works with two color stops is let's just come here and do a red comma. We're gonna keep that one there and then we'll put another red after this uh, just so we can see what this is doing. And instead of a zero zero here, I'm gonna say this is like a 20%, 50%. And so now we have the red into this uh, semi-transparent black color that goes from 20% to 50% and then it transitions back to red. So the two color stops here are what are you know making this work. And if I do a zero, zero, it makes it valid and then I can get rid of both of those. So again, uh, unnecessary, maybe you're watching this in the future, you might not need to bother with this. Right now, I would include this uh, just to make sure that my browser support is is decent. And this is probably the most common use case I use it for, except today, our, our more modern stuff we're doing where things like gradient borders are all the rage. <laughs> and so let's take a look at my button that I have right here where there's my button and I have my hover on here. We're gonna add a little animation to it afterwards. But let's start with just the button where I'm actually gonna change my border to start with. And the border, I'm gonna make it I'm going to exaggerate because it's a demo. So we're going to say five pixels solid, but the trick here is to make it transparent. And this might seem a little bit strange, but we're going to start there. Uh, and then for my background here, I am actually going to stick with the background shorthand. Almost every time I use a background property, I actually use the longhand, but using the shorthand here does help out. And it would never get me in trouble for the type of thing I'm doing here. So instead of white, I'm going to do a linear gradient of white, <laughs> which, you know, that gives us the exact same thing as we saw. So I've hit save, it looks exactly the same, uh, though it did get a bit bigger just because I have the border that's on there now. And then I'm gonna do a comma and we're gonna come in with another gradient. In this case, I'm gonna come in with a conic gradient and let's just do something like a blue to purple and then back to blue and we don't see it. Well, that's kind of stupid, right? If I turn this off, let's you know remove this line. Uh, now we can see my conic gradient is there. And you'll notice something a little bit weird about it in that the top and the bottom area have like a weird repeat going on. And that's because gradients will fill up the content box or the padding box, I should say. And then they repeat underneath the border because normally your border is visible. You don't, you don't have a transparent border. So it's giving a, it, it has this, it's like a weird thing with gradients, but it, it makes sense most of the time. Uh, just so you actually see your entire gradient if you happen to have a border. In this case though, I want my conic gradient to fill in that space and I don't want this weird thing happening. So I can actually come here and say this should be in my border box. And this is why I'm using the uh, shorthand of background because this is actually doing two different things. This is going to set both the background clip and the background origin to border box. 
And if we come and take a look, when I hit save on here, now you can see that conic gradient is filling up all the way into that space, which is exactly what I want. Then if I turn this white back on and hit save, I'm gonna come on here and I'm gonna say this should only be inside my padding box. Then it pulls that back in and we only have the gradient on the outside and the single color here. Uh, and again, I am doing it without the zero zero here. You can add that for better browser support. Uh, but then we get that going on and we have a gradient border. And I always get questions when I do this of why am I doing it with a, a gradient like this instead of just using a border image. And the reason for that is if you want to have a border radius, which I think it looks kind of cool with the border radius on there. If you're using a border image, then you can't get that to work. So, uh, you know, now I can actually have my, my border radius and a nice little bonus tip here, I guess. If you do 100 VW, you'll always get a pill shape. Uh, so let's do that here. I did purple. Let's do this as red just so it stands out a little bit more. And as a little bonus, this has nothing to do with the color stops, but we can get a nice little animation. And I did a short on this where somebody suggested a way to improve the animation. So we're going to see that on a much better way we can animate it. So you can see here, I do have an animation that doesn't exist yet. So I'm going to do that at keyframes of rotate, but that does question like, what are we rotating? What are we moving? And for me, it would be the easiest thing to do is the angle we have on here. And normally on backgrounds, we can't do any sorts of transitions or animations, but now we can do an at property, which now is in all browsers. So I'm going to do an at property of angle, you can call it whatever we need. And so the syntax of this, and if you haven't seen this before, this is called a registered custom property. So this will be an angle. And with um, the registered custom properties, it's we're, it's like sort of like we're it's like TypeScript. We're saying what this custom property is, which enables us to be able to animate the values of custom properties. So the syntax is angle, the initial value. I'm gonna use turns. So I'm gonna say uh, it could be degree, but whatever. Degrees is fine. Uh, we're gonna use a turn after though. We're gonna say zero degrees. And then we're gonna come here and say that the inherits, inherits, I'm gonna put true, uh, it's up to you. It doesn't really matter, but I'm gonna say it's true. Uh, and then we're gonna come, actually before we come down, I just saw I have a small mistake here where my angle needs to have, it's a custom property. So we have to start it with the double hyphen. Uh, and then I'll come down here and we're gonna say this is my from, cause conic gradients need a from of our angle. And now everything looks the same, but say I change this to 180 degrees, the red will go on top instead. So it's using the value here as what we have here. But then on my rotate here, what we can do now is we can say this is two and we want our angle to go to one turn. And so this is where we're actually changing the value of the custom property by first registering that custom property. And now when I go on top of it, you can see that it's rotating around. Now there is a small problem is when I come off, it just jumps. And this is where the, the commenter helped me out in giving me a better idea. And full credit to you, I don't have your name on hand, but I'll put a, a screenshot up. So I just wanna say thank you very much for the suggestion of, instead of doing that, what we're gonna do is actually have this animation always on uh, right here. So now it's always rotating and that's kind of annoying that it's always rotating, uh, right? We don't want that to happen. We, well, hopefully not, especially at this speed. If you're going to do something like this, make it a lot slower than what we're doing here. Uh, cause it's kind of annoying that it moves that fast, but ideally it would only be when we hover. So then what we can actually say is the animation play state is paused. Is it paused or paused? It is paused. Okay. And then when we hover the animation play state is running. And it looks the same, but now if we go on top, it moves. But if I come off, it pauses. But the nice thing with that is it means it doesn't jump. It stops wherever it is when we come off. So a little bonus tip made the video a bit longer, but I hope you liked that uh, and appreciated the little bonus tip right there. And whether you did or not, I really do hope that you enjoyed this video, though I would really appreciate it if you hit the sub button if you haven't yet subscribed. Uh, but with that, I do want to thank my enabler of awesome Johnny, as well as all my other patrons and channel members for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.